This model is a pulley model. You can see that it looks a little bit different than our uh, magnetic switch model we were looking at a second ago. I'm gonna go ahead and choose update model. And so now, whereas with my previous model, we had a 3DCS model navigator tree that was full of information for my 3DCS model. Uh, in this case, I actually have a completely empty uh, tree here because I have no data in this model for a 3DCS analysis yet. Now, if I choose nominal build, no moves are gonna be applied. If I try choosing run analysis, it's gonna tell me I have no measurements to run the analysis for. Or if I try deviating it, we're gonna see nothing change at all because I don't even have any mesh in my model yet. This model is completely void of any 3DCS information. However, a few things that this model does have is it has mates or constraints in SolidWorks that I can extract into my 3DCS DVM model to get those moves we were talking about. It also has some gd &T at the part level that I can extract from those parts to get some variation. And it also has some measures of the assembly level that I can extract to get some measures in my model as well. So all that functionality is just all in this one drop down menu. So I'm just gonna do these one at a time. The first one I'm gonna do is update constraints, which is going to update my constraints in my model to include all of these mates that I have in my SOLIDWORKS model. So I'll choose this right here. 3DCS is now gonna tell me that it found seven feature moves that it was able to create based on 18 SOLIDWORKS assembly mates. And now I actually have a lot of features in my model. You see some meshing now showing up over my parts. And I also have seven moves in my model too. And if I go through my animation for this, we can see one at a time that 3DCS has automatically created all of these moves just based on those constraints within SOLIDWORKS. So, and that's nice, but again, I still, if I try deviating, I'll see a little bit of change because we do have clearances between holes and pins that 3DCS is taking into account, but there's gonna be a very small amount of deviation because I don't have any tolerances in my model yet. You won't see any of the meshes leaving the surface, for example. And also if I try running my analysis, I still don't have any measures in my model yet. So next I'm gonna extract those two. So I'm gonna go back up to my extraction dialog or my extraction drop down up here. And I'm gonna choose update gd &T. And with this, I'm going to update the gd &T for all of my parts in my model. So I'm gonna choose the pulley assembly here and 3DCS is going to hunt through all of those SOLIDWORKS part files. And it says it extracted 71 total gd &T callouts. So now you see I also have gd &T in my list here. And now if I choose deviate now, and I zoom in on some of these faces or some of these holes, we're gonna see their size is changing, their position is changing, the location of those surfaces is, are changing, because now we have size, position, profile, tolerances in our model. Anything that existed within the 3DC, or within the SOLIDWORKS uh, part files is now a 3DCS tolerance being deviated. And then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and extract some measures. So I'm gonna choose this update measures option first, which is going to update a few measures for me. So it's gonna say that it was able to extract two dimensional distance measures. So now I have two measures in my list here. However, I also have some assembly level gd &T in this model. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to tell. So I'm gonna go ahead and unexplode my parts here. And we can see that we have some, you know, some gd &T telling me I wanna check the position for this outer diameter of my pulley here, or maybe I wanna check the position of the inner diameter of this bearing here. So I wanna check the, the position of a few things in my model relative to the overall assembly ABC. So I'm gonna choose this update gd &T measures now, and that's gonna be our last input that we just extract from SOLIDWORKS. And that's gonna extract three gd &T measures as well as some datums that it needed in order to check those to ABC or D, for example. 
And then now I have five measures of my model. I have all my moves, all my GD and T. And now if I nominal build and I deviate, we're gonna see this model move around. And then also if I actually run my analysis, I actually get results for this model, it's very similar to the results that I had in my previous model that we were looking at before. Um, but with this one, I didn't actually create anything within 3DCS. I extracted all of these measures, all of these moves, and all of this GD&T just from the SOLIDWORKS assembly file or part files.